Hey everybody. Hi again. Um, finishing up a big rhino painting. Not sure why I wanted to paint a rhino, but I felt the need and I did it. Um, it turned out to be a pretty fun project. And I want to say thanks for watching, first of all, and thanks to all the new followers. Uh, thank you to Crafty Mamas. Shelly from over there sent a lot of you guys over to watch my videos and subscribe, and I appreciate her very much. She's been very helpful in helping me learn a little bit about how to do the YouTube thing. Um, she's full of great information, and she has a great channel. It's really fun to, to watch and see how she uh, connects with her audience. So, the rhino painting, I've, I've got some videos going to come after this. It kind of goes through the different steps of the process. I had some questions uh, sent to me on comments, people trying to, to transfer and having issues with getting a good transfer. And I want you to know that it takes a little while to get it just right. And even though I've been doing it for a while, I still have, you know, issues. And it depends on the size of the, the painting the size of the pieces of paper you're cutting, the transfers can vary. Um, the magazine pages make a difference. Um, how well you burnish it into the beeswax makes a difference. There's, there's a whole lot of different things that can come into play. So if you have a problem, feel free to send me a message. I, I don't mind sharing tips or pointers and hopefully I'll be able to um, get into more detail here in the near future because um, at some point I'd like to go live on YouTube what I may do until then is do a live on Periscope or Facebook or just do like this, do a recorded video and just post it. And um, But what I, what I want to do is some smaller paintings where I go through the whole painting without it being a, uh, a time lapse or delayed. I just sit down and I just, just explain every step of the process. From start to finish it'll be a probably a 20 or 30 minute video I'll do a small painting I mean a, like a, a three inch little square um, it'll be something really simple so it'll be easy to find the materials for yourself if you want to follow along and you'll be able to do it and then go back and watch it several times if you'd like um, just to get better to process it's best to work small for a while and just play with how the transfer works and you don't even really have to do a painting, anything in particular. You can do something abstract. You can do um, maybe just squares or strips of colored paper, just uh, colored magazine paper, and see how it works for you and see if you have the right magazines that would work. There, there are several magazines that do work. I have my favorites. What I usually do is I, I get stacks of magazines, and I'll pull off a couple pages, and I'll just transfer on a small block as a test. And if it works, I know to use those magazines again. But sometimes the magazines are transfer, but the colors don't come off as very vibrant. So that's another reason I choose the magazines I do. Cigar Aficionado, uh, Veranda, Architectural Digest are, are the three that I use the most. Uh, occasionally I'll use some others, but like I said, it's, it's if I'm desperate for colors. If I'm doing a big block of green, you know, Veranda is probably the place I'm going to go for that. And then and cigar aficionado. I get a lot of browns, a lot of great oranges and reds. Architectural digests I like because of the textures of the architecture, windows and reflections and things like that. Those all play an important role in a painting depending on the subject matter. You know, architecture is probably more important. Doing an animal, I scribe into it so much. I've, I've come in and taken away so many areas. It's not near as important to have those details. Um, but it's fun to, to still look into this painting and I'll bring you up here closer in just a second. The faces and the textures from you know, either carpet patterns or, or furniture patterns, faces, windows, and of course just foliage, grass, flowers, things like that. Kind of mix it up. I want somebody to walk up to one of my paintings and, and kind of get lost in the little images that they can find in the bigger picture. Okay, as, all, as I promised earlier, I'm going to take you in a little closer to the rhino painting and try not to get too much glare. Um, as we get in closer, I'm going to just show you. You can see the carving I did into the, the beeswax with the ink transfer. And 
that gives me a, a visual and a tactile texture and it makes the highlights of the uh, Rhino. You can see I have text, um, patterns from fabrics, faces. Let's see if there's anything else here interesting. Lots of patterns and I love to have text um, in different colors that don't necessarily belong. So when you look at it from afar, it looks just a little bit off and it kind of draws you in to investigate why the colors aren't as you would expect in a rhino or whatever the subject matter is. You can see down where the grass is, I, when I transferred that green, and you'll see in the video, it came off a little bit darker than I wanted, so I went in and I scraped away a whole lot of the green. And um, of course I left a lot more of it in the shadowy areas, so it was darker. And plus the scraping into it gives it a, a tactile finish. And on the outside areas, I'm gonna leave that pulpy paper. On this one, I just, I think it's a cool addition. I don't normally do that, unless I'm showing a process. And here would be one of my sample paintings that I do that shows the process from the paper and the beeswax, the magazine pages being cut, the sanded, a little bit of moisture added to it while I'm rubbing it off, and then, of course, the, the transfer being shown, and then the, the clean finish. I like using those beads. Those are... Um, the video's next. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first time lapse video you're gonna see is of me removing the paper. So I skipped the steps where I was cutting all the, the pieces of paper and put them into place and the sanding. Those are both the longest part of the process. So I figured I'd skip over that and just go directly to uh, removing the paper. That's the fun stuff. Um, so here you go. So here I am wetting the paper that's been sanded already and I just rub it off with my fingertips. Now it's definitely harder doing the sanding and it takes a little longer because I have to get in all the nooks and crannies. But the rubbing comes off pretty easy. Then in the end I take a wet rag and I just kind of buff it. So once the paper is removed, you can see in this next video clip, it's going to be a time lapse of me taking a heat gun. And what I'm doing there is I'm heating up the ink on top of the beeswax. It's going to fuse the two layers together. So it didn't take much here. I just take a heat gun and caustic heat gun I've got. And I uh, let it warm up over the beeswax. It just kind of makes it soft, so it's easier for me to take my tools and carve into it. And it's also making that bond I was telling you about. So after I've heated up the, the composition, the, the beeswax, and I've fused the ink into it, I use these tools. I have different ones for different textures that I carve into the wax and basically removing the ink that I transferred to get highlights. Um, and it gives it a, both a visual and a, a tactile texture. But these are just like clay tools, potter tools. I've got some favorites here. Um, some of them I'm not even sure what they're from or what they were used for, but just sharp instruments that I can draw into the, to the painting. And that's how you get details. Carving into the beeswax, what I'm basically doing is removing the ink that's been transferred in certain areas so I can get highlights and cut in details that will better outline the, the subject matter. Uh, the biggest problem I have here is knowing when to stop because once you take it off, you cannot put it back on. So, got to be careful in that part.
So after I've carved into the, de the details into the painting and I've removed the outside edges, I'll, I'll hit it again with the heat gun. And what I'm doing there is just basically letting, letting the, the wax get warm again and kind of melt and it smooths off the edges where I've carved into it and left these sharper edges. And it also, the, the little balls of ink that I've moved around on there, it kind of fuses them back into the wax. Um, and so I'll carve into it some more. And a lot of times I'll set the painting aside and I'll look at it from afar and I'll look at the, the image or the photograph that I use as a reference. And I go back and forth and I, I keep removing until I feel comfortable with it. Sometimes I go too far and it really makes me mad, but you gotta live with it. Once you remove the ink, there's no putting it back. So there you go. Once I get most of the details cut in, and I'm feeling pretty confident about it, that's when I'll go in and start, I'll heat up that wax again and start carving out the areas around the subject matter, the negative areas. Just revealing that plywood, it gives more contrast to the subject. And I'll save that beeswax and reuse it. So um, I think that's all for now. Please share and follow. Once I get to uh, my thousand followers and I'll start doing the live videos on YouTube, but for now, these are all just going to be pre-recorded. And if you want to jump over to Periscope, Instagram, Facebook, it's Randy L. Purcell. Um, you can find me there. And otherwise, I'll see you later.